I just got another shipment from Osprey in, and so this should be the VU33P E300. So this is the variant that I think it's around $3,300. It's essentially three VU33P chips instead of the VU35Ps that are in the normal Osprey that retails for around $5,200. Let's go ahead and get this unboxed and take a look at it. From an exterior standpoint, it should pretty much look identical to the VU35P, uh, with really the only difference being on the internals, and we'll be able to compare cooling and whatnot and kind of see what it's like compared to the VU35P. Hopefully this, run, this one will run a little bit cooler. Well, let's go ahead and get it cut open. And this is a less common variant of the E300, mainly being the fact that they did, they did like a test run of this uh, several months ago. And then they finally just put these up for order not too long ago. And right off the bat, we can see we actually have a nice... E3 or a nice Osprey box here, which we didn't have on our last E300. So that is cool. Our last one was just kind of uh, foam with the E300 in it. So let's go ahead and get this out. Yeah, really cool. So it looks like they created their own boxes these which is really neat so we've got the osprey electronics logo on the top it says osprey electronics on the side and if we spin it around we see the same thing on this side and on the edges kind of see the same thing with just the logo so really nice box looks like it just has a lift lid so let's go ahead and get this lifted up A little bit of suction there and there it is so really nice presentation on these now so that's the inside of the box you can see there is foam at the top of it to handle any type of shipping vibrations and there it is so this is the e so it's got the e300 e 1545 and what we should see on here is these should be the VU33 chips. Now, when I ordered this, they did not have a Noctua version of it. They only had the regular fan version. It looks like they've recently added the Noctua version to their website. So if that's something you're interested in, the Noctua might actually be fairly decent on this one as compared to the 35. The 35 runs pretty warm. And so I actually went with the original fans on the 35. Go ahead and get that lifted up and out. And that's the inside of the box. Again, foam all around, so that's really cool. Really nice box, I do like that. And we just span around here. We can see it looks very similar to the normal E300, which, would we, which is what we expect. So some type of, same type of fan connectors nice we do have the three pin adapters in here or the four pin adapters rather so we're going to go ahead and get this plugged in we're going to get it fired up it looks like we still need seven cables uh two for each hash board plus one for the control board we're going to get, go ahead get this fired up and check out the dashboard back over at the computer and we hopped on over to the ip address of the unit and we're just going to go ahead and log in with root and password and we can see it is hashing away. Whoa, those temps are really cool. The fans are ramped up right now, uh, which is interesting because the fans are low. So let's check the fans. Yeah, our we can adjust our fan speeds. Our current level is 10. It doesn't need to be at max because it's nowhere near 60 right now. Uh, our chip temps... Oh, it looks like our last one is actually at 88. There we go. Sometimes this dashboard isn't on par. They're working on some updates to that. 
to go to firmware and we are running 17.1 and if we hop on over to our other E300 we can see that we were on 17 we weren't on dot one so we do have a minor revision and you can see we now have a di diagnostics option which we didn't have on the first one now on the other one rather now one thing I will mention is there is a firmware update that's kind of in the process of happening on this E300 it hasn't applied yet but Ironfish just dropped and so kind of waiting on that one but if we head on over to this one head to minor yeah you can see that we don't have version 18 yet so we don't have the Ironfish option however we're going to go ahead and adjust some pull info we can see the base core clocks here are 600 and our VCC is probably around 625, uh, 650, somewhere in that range. So those could probably come down some. Uh, but our temps are super low. So that is awesome. Uh, we will be adjusting our fan curve, but first let's get our pool information in. And I'm going to leave the clocks as are for now. Go ahead and stop the miner. And let's go ahead and start the miner back up. Yep, okay. it started back up. So it's going to be ramping up. Whoa, it's ramping up. Let's head on over to diagnostics. It looks like they just added kind of a ping tool in there. Uh, nothing else really looks like it was added. Let's go ahead and hop over to the minor logs. And it should be loading up the bit streams to each of the chips right now. Just take, typically takes a minute or two. And we can see this is classified as a 333. So these are the VU33P chips as opposed to the VU35P. And if we head on, while that's ramping up, if we head on over to Osprey Electronics, go to the store and take a look at the VU33. We should be getting, that's this one here, we should be getting around 8.8 .8 giga hash on Caspa. And as you can see, they do have a Noctua version now. Uh, I just have the 6000 RPM fan version, which we're going to be able to turn those fans down probably pretty good. Okay, looks like the bitstream's just loaded on all three chips. And before we do any type of tuning, we want to make sure we're not getting any significant error rates on any of these chips. Uh, my last E300, the VU35P, I did have some error on one of the boards. Their support was super good about it, replaced it, no, pretty much no questions asked. I, we did some troubleshooting, sent them the board. As soon as they received it, the they tested it the same day and sent me actually sent me out a brand new board the following day. So it was really good turnaround time on that. And it's still ramping up a bit. You can see the core temps are super low right now still. And you might be hearing that fan ramping up. That is actually in the next room right now. It looks like right now we are rocking around 7.165 uh, giga hash a second. So each of those boards is getting around 2.388. If we compare that to the VU35P. Now keep in mind the VU35P I do have overclocked a bit. But those boards pull 5.174 giga hash per second. And we can see our chip temps are around 45. Our board temps are around 27. Our HBM can actually be down clock some. Uh, right now it's actually a little bit high. Uh, we can take those down to a thousand. We're just going to let this run for a few minutes and then I'm going to just make sure there's no errors on any of the chips. Make sure everything's hashing good. Then we're going to take apart the unit. We're going to check the boards. We're going to see if they have the heat sinks on the back of them, like the latest, ver latest ship versions of the. Uh, VU35P before we attempt to overclock them further. But so far so good. Uh, we're getting around 
Uh, so we're getting 7.1 gigahash per second right now, and we're getting around the same shares across the board. We verified that everything is working with it, and before I do any overclocking, what I want to do is go ahead and take it, take it apart, check the chips, and see if they have the rear heat sinks on them. Not sure if they do or not. Um, all of the VU, the newer VU35Ps are shipping with those heat sinks already attached. Uh, but the temps on these are extremely cooler compared to the VU35Ps. So let's go ahead and get the cover off and let's see uh, if these heat sinks actually have them. I'm not even sure if they'll need them, but we will see. All right, let's go ahead and disconnect our data cable and let's pull it out and see. And it looks like we do have all of the heat sinks on the back of the boards. So there you can see all the little uh, black heat sinks keep the VRM temps cool. Very nice. Let's just go ahead and double check the other boards while we're at it. So definitely a pretty tight fit on these, uh, but we can see we've got all of those heat sinks there. Once again, this is the uh, smaller heat sink, and we do have all of them on there. So, no issues in overclocking this unit at all. We're going to go ahead and get this all back together. I'm going to put it with the other miners, and then we're going to do some tuning on it. Back on over to the dashboard, we can see that we're running... Pretty much running 750 megahertz, which is the max that the UI will let you set. Now you can configure command line and run higher than 750, but I just decided on this unit for now, I'm gonna run 750. And what that means is we're also gonna run a our core voltage at around 760. And that's what we currently have configured. So we're running those at 760. I really haven't dialed in the voltage yet. I wanted to make sure everything was stable. And what we're looking at is chip temps that are around that 70 degree mark. Our VRM temps are sub 60, which is good. And our board temps are in the 40s. So everything's running super cool, which is really nice to see. And if we head on over to our fan speed curve, you can see we're only running at 70% fan speed. So that is awesome to see as well. And if we head on over to the minor logs, we can see that we are currently doing just under three giga hash per card and we're our hash rate is staying stable at 8.953 giga hash a second the unit is advertised for an 8.8 .8, and it's slightly above what the units advertised for and we can see that all of our memory or all of our core temps rather are in that 60 degrees celsius range everything looks good it is hashing away we, of course, have an E300 VU35P that we've been comparing this to as well. And it is up and running and stable. And if we hop on over to our dashboard where we're mining, let's go ahead and give this a refresh. And here you can see kind of where I shut it off. And then kind of that ramp up over the past two hours. And it settled in a little bit right now. It might be doing some dev fee work here. We, pe we peaked around 22 almost 23 giga hashes a sec uh, across both units. And we've seen this one go as high as nine. And obviously this one goes as high as 16 or 17. Uh, it does fluctuate a little bit there, but everything is hashing away and we're doing pretty well. Uh, we haven't, we've been having some difficulties with solo blocks lately. So if I have it on over to blocks here, you can see uh, we were doing super good we were averaging 40 to 50% luck, and now we're kind of at an average of 75% luck. So it's still better than pool mining, but it's getting really close to that point where we may switch to pool mining, uh, especially with some ASICs shipping out now. 
Uh, it may be more advantageous at the current moment to pull mine instead of solo mine. But that's it for the VU33P video. Uh, overall, I love this unit. Uh, I actually, based on how everything's running, I actually would have preferred two of these over a VU35P. Um, obviously, the price would be a little bit higher, but they are running super cool, which is nice. But I am certainly happy with both units. Uh, super happy that I was able to pick up the VU33P. Uh, it A few months ago, it popped up. But I think they only have one or two of them. I missed out on that, but I was able to pick this one up as soon as they went back on sale and they had available stock. So really happy to finally have uh, this specific unit to go along with the VU35P. Hopefully in the future, I can pick up a VU9P as well as a VU13P. So that is the plan.